Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. We're going to do it before and after. We're going to plant this up, set it up, all the cool weather crops are going to go into there. This space is 30 inches wide, I don't know, 12 to 15 feet long. It's perfect for my cool weather crops. The southern sun is going to be on this side, west sun behind me, so this strip will get full sun. Perfect for March, April, May cool weather vegetables. We're going to be putting in transplants. I'll show you some of the transplants. We'll be putting in some seed, but this is not a very big space. It's only 30 inches wide, um, 12 to 15 feet long, and I'm going to pack it full of the cool weather crops. Leafy greens, lettuces, garlic, radishes. Watch the transformation. You don't need a lot of land to really pack in a lot of vegetables for your spring garden. This is my unheated greenhouse. The three flats right here, one in the back. All these are indoor seed starts. It's really important that you acclimate them to the outdoors. Growing inside, they're not used to the UV rays of the sun, so you gotta give them a good week to slowly get used to the sun. Put them out, bring them in, all that. These have been sitting out here for a while. They're used to the sun. If not, if you just go from indoors to outdoors, the sun will burn the leaves and it can kill your plants off, so you have to acclimate them. So I have you know, spinach, endive, different brassicas, there's lettuces in there. Everything I need for the cool weather crops. The cool weather crops can go into the garden when frost is still around, perfectly fine. They can handle that freeze, that frost. You just want the soil to start warming up. So here, beginning of March is a perfect time to get these plants into my garden. I will link the build for this low tunnel in the video description. This is how I kept some of the kale alive through the winter when it gets really cold, low 20s, teens around here. This is going to be the first kale that I take out of the garden. I'd like to do this for some of the crops. This way I can start harvesting sooner and then I'm going to plant in the rest of the transplants and you know, stuff will produce over the next several months. I remove the plastic. First thing you want to do, of course, is weed. Get the planting area cleaned up nicely. And again, I want to stress this is about 30 inches you know, really to 34 inches wide. You don't need a lot of space to have a garden. This is the cheapest way to grow. You don't have to spend money on expensive metal raised beds. You don't have to build wooden raised beds. You can just plant in the ground. This is how it was done for thousands of years. So clear out the weeds. And then across here, I'm gonna put down really any organic granular fertilizer. That's a 344 N, P, and K. As long as those numbers are represented, it really doesn't matter. Just buy what's the cheapest. Most of the ingredients are the same. So quite heavily, I'm just gonna sprinkle the organic granular all the way down around the plants that are down there. These are gonna get watered in with a water-soluble fertilizer too. That will give them plenty of uh, N, P, and K that's immediately, immediately available to them. That means they can grow leaves, they can start growing nicely. The organic granular, takes time. Over the weeks and months, it'll be broken down by mi microbes. It will feed the plants. I'm not putting down compost. This soil is in pretty good condition. These are heavy feeders with respect to uh, nitrogen. Get them some quick growth. I'm leaving up the string and stakes there because that's what the plastic was resting on. This is a multi-purpose design. So as it gets hotter, I'm going to put shade cloth over this so that the ground stays cooler and my cool weather crops grow longer into the season. They won't get bitter. They're not going to bolt and set flowers. So once the organic granular is down, I'm just going to take a hand shovel, come back, fix the edging, throw some soil in, loosen this to a good two to four inches all the way through. That will mix in the organic granular fertilizer, but it'll also loosen up the soil so that I can plant seeds. Now this part is kind of wet. When you come down here, this is ready for seeding, so I'll probably drop in some radishes or something on there. This is protected from the rain, so it's really nice soil. The other thing I'm doing is I'm leaving in one or two dandelions that sprouted. They will be your first greens. They're absolutely delicious. If you feed them and take care of them, they're going to become massive, and it's going to be a perfect green harvest for your garden. A quick 20-30 minutes worth of work and this bed is ready to be planted. I'm gonna go get the transplants. I'll put some seeds in right in here. I'm gonna let the rest dry. One thing I want to uh, stress is because it's spring, things are just starting to warm, as I was cleaning the uh, more dead leaves that were on the kale, I found snails and slugs. So you wanna put down slug bait, either iron phosphate or sulfur baits. I will link a video that talks about that, but Remember, snails and slugs, if you have them, they're coming out now. 
that it's warming and they're going to go right for your brassicas, your lettuces, your spinach. So if you put the baits out now, they'll die off before everything's really maturing and you won't have a problem. Brought out my spinach transplants, endive, lettuce, and those are collards. And one of the things I'm trying to practice this year is not over planting. So I'm not going to put the collards out here because if I spin around slowly, take a look over here, I have collards that are still growing from last year. So I'm going to be using those now. They'll get a big drink of water soluble fertilizer. But sometimes we can overplant. And if I'm putting out too many kales and cabbages, it's just going to give more places for white flies, a problem that I get here for them to go. So I'm growing less, but growing enough that I know that I'm going to have plenty of food. So I'm going to plant this up with the uh, lettuces here, the greens, do some radish planting, and then we'll finish up. This is really the cheapest way to garden. A row, 30 inches to 36 inches wide. I wouldn't go beyond that. Make it as long as you wish. South, remember, is over here. West is behind me, gets full sun. You really don't have to spend a lot of money. Just set up a row wherever you want to grow. You're good to go. So I put in the spinach. We're going to water this in with the water soluble in a second. A little bit more closely together than is recommended because I'm going to be harvesting it before it fully matures. The endive spaced out, you know, I don't even know what that is. Maybe 10 inches, 12 inches. Plenty of room for that to uh, form into a full head. That's what I want. And then same with the romaine left enough space so that they're going to form into full heads. You can plant things more closely together if you're going to kind of harvest it as a cut and come again, baby leaves. So once the transplants are in, any water soluble fertilizer. Water soluble means the N, P, and K are going to be ready. And I just want to show you how much to give your transplants. That's always confusing to people. You don't have to put a whole gallon on every plant. Just follow the instructions and something like that is plenty of water soluble to get these plants off to a great start. Let's go over, check out the uh, radishes that I just planted as seeds. So the established plants will water into. For the radishes, I like to uh, prepare the finger holes about a quarter inch deep. You don't have to over worry about the depth, but about a quarter of an inch. They are three inches spaced per row, about four inches in the middle. Two seeds, I don't know if you can see them, but I'm putting two seeds per hole and just cover them over. You can put in one seed if you're concerned, but I've done a lot of experiments. When you space them three inches apart in a row, four inches apart between rows, you can really grow two radishes. They're just going to push each other to the side, so you get a little bit more out of the space. All right, cover these up. We'll water them in. Any new seeds, I just give a quick splash across where they're planted. If you're not going to give them water solu soluble fertilizer, definitely water them in. You want the seeds to absorb water, that gets germination started. Plants that are established, I give them a little bit more. Just a nice soaking right on top. And I'll do that for the rest of the plants. It took me about an hour to get this bed set up. Again, check out the video for the uh, frame that I put in there. I'll be putting shade cloth on here. You'll be able to grow your cool weather crops longer because the shade cloth will cool down the soil come late May, middle of June. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. This is the cheapest way to grow vegetables. You don't have to spend a lot of money. Because I'm putting my transplants in, even though they're hardened off, it's a full sunny day, so I am gonna lay down some shade cloth across here. Just give them a little bit of protection until the root system's established over the next couple of days, and then it'll be good to go. Again, thanks for watching. Check out my seed shop and please subscribe and follow me. I'll be teaching you how to grow food, have fun, and how to save money. Thanks for watching.